It's time now to dig in and to understand uh, these four um, accelerator projects and um, what knowledge did uh, did we did each and each of them uh, uh, extract and what were the most important outcomes? Western fashion study in 2021, and then it's in about a month. Um, so during its three year life cycle, it's over 25 transnational partnerships. Uh, so we introduced new sustainable and circular processes and methods in, for the fashion industry. The Western Fashion Consortium consisted of the European Creative Hubs Network uh, and World Entrepreneurship. Uh, the European uh, Institution of Design, Data Scouts, and Zip House, uh, supported the 25 uh, SMEs through online matchmaking, through funding, through the Extra Fashion Support Program, including um, online workshops, uh, inspirational sessions with experts, and mentoring. Um, so uh, during this uh, journey, we generated tools, new knowledge, and recommendations uh, for the next support programs, but also for policy makers. And now that the project is ending, uh, this knowledge is ready to be implemented, and we look forward to future opportunities. Hmm, that should not change. I want to bring deeper stuff is remember what Igor said. These are four projects to basically the same task for the same. Structure. So also our project version of change will end after three years with the fifteenth of January next year. So this is our final appearance in public let's say. We also have four consortium partners of other quality in the uh, Baltic countries, plus Belgium. So we are in the European State of Business Federation, which I represent with uh, Arta here. Um, then we have CEDA, which is more like a business consultancy. Uh, then we have uh, these directions also uh, uh, in Estonia, uh, they are dealing with more with stuff and investors, investment programs. And then we have the Estonian Academy of Arts, which was the designer part we all work together. And again, the program was similar. We had obviously we did a market research, uh, challenges, barriers for new fashion designers, we screened that uh, qualitative, quantitative uh, research, came up with a methodology, created an open call. We had 135 applicants, we basically we screened, we had 35 great creative ideas, so international teams, um, 25 before actually who then made it to the growth program, and then the last five basically we got the best already, the education, the trainings, visits, um, and of course as a result, he goes asking for results, of course we all produced methodologies, studies, and knowledge of online, which is the other part. Um, we created a toolkit online available on, on our websites. Um, and um, yeah, basically, uh, looking forward also now to um, publish our outcomes, also with the policy recommendations here today and hopefully later. So, as you can see, all the insights basically were um, three, uh, threefold, but we found that the personal exchange. The inter uh, action, uh, the access of free, easy access at the regional, locally, regional, and international level was key for our uh, uh, well, startups. Uh, we need to get the moves to first them. They really appreciate the program. It was a success from our point of view for them. They really gave us a good, possible awesome feedback, uh, knowing that we really did, it was a purposeful project. Uh, I remember this one, because I don't have so much time, one project from being, a, uh, sorry, Finland, a producer to women led uh, a startup. They basically through the problem got in touch with a um, brand owner with a company in the Netherlands. That's basically the deal. They have to create a national project or partnerships. Uh, and they're now in their shares. They basically have vegan uh, handbags that they are <coughs> selling. Most ways in Finland, but now they're basically the manager outside the home country. So, again, um, the internet, the personal interchange is key. Access to experts, tutors, uh, designers, people who have been there. Mm -hmm. So, to build capacity, so one takeaway. 
The second point is the personal mentoring. So we really have access to people who take them by the hand, through programs, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, teach them basically um, how to ship around obstacles and find the right suppliers and what have you. So basically, consultancy and of course the knowledge of the IT side, the access to online data is important even though for these projects. They yeah, unfortunately are very sustainable because the particular end in those data uh, hubs um, will be basically be left on their own devices. So we need to address that um, the issue all the time. Uh, my name is Laura Velasco. I'm working in AWA. And well, I'm here to talk about the our project. Uh, well, in our case, the project finished uh, last year, at the end of last year. Uh, it was a really successful project, to be honest. Um, not only because uh, all the goals and achievements, achievements we reach, mm -hmm. but also because um, we foster new initiatives and, and new ideas to create sustainable and um, yeah, like um, sustainable and, and, and innovative ideas into uh, textile and, and fashion sector. Um, we supported like uh, 30, 30 sorry, um, new initiatives in collaboration between um, entities. Uh, <coughs> stream, um, and with a well, mentorship. Um, uh, also uh, financial and supporting uh, their ideas and mentoring them to create uh, like an uh, achievable and important uh, results, let's say. Um, also, uh, we reached uh, some uh, new projects um, with all these ideas that were created. And, uh, well, yeah, uh, it's mostly what we, what we were working for. Uh, also, we have um, some uh, reports that are available on our website uh, that everyone can, can achieve. So I encourage you all, if you are interested, to, to look for it because it's one of the items that are uh, looking for uh, an education in all these things. So, uh, yeah, that's Nice to meet you all. I'm very happy to be here to introduce our project. Uh, it's called Small But Perfect. Uh, it has a course of 30 months and is finished in July. It is led by the Athens University of Economics and Business Fashion Tech Research Center. Uh, through its course, we have managed to accelerate 28 fashion SMEs to transition to circular and sustainable uh, models. We have also managed to accelerate the accelerators uh, by driving systemic change in uh, fashion business organizations in eight possible countries. Uh, and in short, what is important uh, from our outcomes is that we managed to uh, map the landscape, the policy landscape in, the, uh, in which the SMEs operate in, and we have created a international network of uh, organizations that support them. Thank you. Thank you as well. Okay, so we're shifting over a little bit. Let's hear a little bit about the outcomes um, of the project. We'll start to touch on Anais. Can you uh, shed some light on the Expo Fashion? Yeah, from our side, I would uh, definitely mention the Expo Fashion uh, Support Program, uh, which was based on the needs assessment we conducted in the beginning of the project through interviews with different stakeholders from the fashion uh, industry. And I think it helped SME, but it also helped us to understand better your, their needs. Mm -hmm. I have SMEs here. <laughs> um, also, I would like to mention uh, the Esther Fashion Circular Fashion Business uh, Toolkit, which is available online on the Spotify website, but you can also have a look at it uh, there. I think there on the screen, and uh, you can do it. Um, my computer. So um, this toolkit is a, a learning uh, resource designed to assist small to medium-sized fashion brands who want to become more sustainable uh, and circular. 
uh, but it also prepares the trainers to deliver um, workshops and training sessions to educators, students, designers, or companies who are in the phase of uh, transitioning. So these are some tangible uh, outcomes that I would like to share at this point. Michael, the one thing I didn't mention, which made a little bit uh, different to the other uh, these projects, is what we designed, uh, decided to design, uh, is the uh, self-assessment tool. Of course, you'll find it on our website in the Knowledge Hub, uh, which is basically a catalog online set of questions to help uh, startups or any company, so free of uh, to identify um, what are the gaps in their making their uh, business uh, model or in their approach to design their, their products um, uh, in terms of circularity. So, a self assessment tool to give them a basis, a reference, then to go out and find an expert, a consultant, or partner, or supplier, etc., to, to see how can we address that problem. Sometimes it's a big gap. There might be we see these spider webs, right? Then there's some that might be a big, uh, big uh, breach in the, the center, which means they don't have any management skills. They are great designers, great people, but they don't really know how to scale the business, or they don't really don't, don't know how to talk to a potential investor. And they're really scared, and that's why their, 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 their business is probably not great. So it's a good starting point. It's not perfect. We only have a very limited means. And we did it within those, uh, those limits, but we hope that this is a useful tool that also will survive, of course, you know, as I said, sit there. Um, um, yeah, and another outcome I already mentioned it before is that we really felt that it was not, it's a bit transition, it's important. We have the virtual infrastructure, of course, that these hubs and, um, and access to, to data, but it should, really, it should only be a tool to lead them to people to get in touch. Personal touch with the people who really know. Because in the end, it's really the community or the business that is based on trust. If you don't trust your supplier, if there's some kind of logistics mm -hmm. that will let you down, if you don't trust your, 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 your retailer, or there's not a good way. So people need to get together with each other, but we do not in person. That's really key. Um, and yeah, the third thing I already mentioned that we can also just uh, do the policy. Well, um, I think all they said already is uh, really important, of course, and uh, also the last two things that are uh, related. Uh, from our side, we also, as they said already, but um, we try to uh, get in touch uh, as a team and that we're uh, trying to find a way of uh, collaboration. and. Um, uh, well, just uh, teach them, uh, mentor them into new uh, initiatives. They, they, they have the, the, the idea of, of creating. So uh, I think that was the, the, the most uh, uh, valuable uh, outcome with it. Uh, and also, um, the, well, the way of putting in contact um, those uh, stakeholders with the SMEs that nowadays are still creating new projects or uh, new collaborations, um, I think is uh, something invaluable and that uh, well, we can thank all of us. Uh, as I said before, um, the reports we leave at the disposal of everyone. Uh, it's something that uh, could be uh, valuable for, for all the new people that uh, have uh, new ideas or uh, don't know how to reach a point and need to, to get access in, on some house or uh, yeah, I think yeah, those, those are most of the things. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, for us, the most important outcome, based on the evaluation of our leaflets, of course, was the uh, community of peers we created through the peer mentoring activities we did, uh, the city pool camps, showcasing, and uh, business matching events. 
Uh, we've also created an excellent acceleration methodology uh, from our uh, top experts in the fashion industry, the other consortium, uh, Fashion Revolution, the Swedish Fashion Council, the Hollywood University, uh, the University of Portsmouth, and the World Fair Twitter Box Office. Uh, we've also created uh, face to face interaction with policymakers, which is very important. We are creating policy dialogues and organizing in Athens, Berlin, and the European Parliament. Uh, from the methodology, of course, of the Federal uh, Policy Office and Fashion Revolution. Uh, and for us, of course, the most successful outcome would be that we have the opportunity to exploit uh, the project and the acceleration program in a new project, uh, a Horizon project we have now, starting in January. It's called Fabrics. Uh, it's going to be led by the Dutch University of Technology. Uh, partners are also the Athens University, uh, Economics and Business, the Erasmus University, Fashion Revolution social fashion factory uh, and the goal of this project specifically would be the creation of circular fashion manufacturing ecosystems in the cities of Rotterdam and Athens. Uh, yeah, so we're very excited to continue the exploration program. Fantastic. Okay, so now that we have a little uh, an overview, um, maybe if you want to leave that slide, because it's exactly what we need. Our as you mentioned, it speaks for all four projects. So, really, the community and congratulations that we get this project. I think this is great. Uh, for the management capacity, I mentioned it the local house, super important. And uh, yeah, so it's all about networking, getting in touch with, uh, with the right people. People buy from people, and trust is the basis of the community. So, we basically um, sign off this. this, this, this Instead of having four coordinators and four projects on stage, or, uh, have these four projects at the same time for the same topic, it, it's a bit, it, it used to be a bit awkward, now I don't feel awkward at all, and I think that we can do something all together, and this is uh, how it should proceed. Um, but we can talk about some recommendations uh, as well. So, for example, we noticed that uh, in the beginning with uh, the online matchmaking that we were doing, uh, but also for the pilot further development, I think we would need more support, you would need more support in terms of uh, timing, of uh, finding and well, uh, funding as well. Um, you will have the opportunity to share your opinion very soon, but this is a little bit what we noticed. Um, so, uh, yeah, it would be, I think it would be Easier uh, if you if you if you have more time to get to know to uh, potential partners, um, also to um, to develop a feasible action plan and also to draft a contract uh, that would suit everyone's uh, needs uh, because that was not very clear for everyone in our case at least. Um, and we think that the, the the role of the local hubs here is very important. And they can reinforce this process with their local experts. So, um, for an acceleration program for fashion, sustainable fashion SMEs, I think that um, it would benefit from a network, a uh, transnational network that would uh, connect all these local hubs in uh, different locations and it could offer uh, personal interaction, um, peers interaction, it would also offer them. A pools of experts, uh, it would also share methodologies, uh, toolkits, um, and would bring all, all, all the actors uh, together. And it could also uh, work as a way to, to, to monitor impact of all those uh, who are involved. Yeah. Michael? Yeah, definitely. definitely. So uh, the question is how can we get, create a structure? That is sustainable, obviously, and that enables uh, these kind of interaction mm -hmm. in a structured way. We don't have this, but we found, even though all the measures, all the instruments, you know, all the events, and the you know, tu the tutorials and what have you, that we, they were all very useful, mm -hmm. but it's three years. Yeah. And then the companies, particularly now, you know how it is, they all like, oh, this was so nice, but it's such a pity, isn't there next project? And I'm like, oh, it's a little bit so. 
is this sustainability aspect that is a little bit missing. You know? So we have to find somehow some way, some overarching structure, we believe, that, that, that catches up all these people and then they can basically find a place yes. where they have again the access to these tools and these experts and these studios this and what have you. Work, I imagine it's like a, the glue uh, between the local And you might create a uh, little your project, you know, with these uh, hot water dams or these hubs experience to how to basically form, you know, to structure uh, this type of hubs. And I'm thinking of the uh, European circular business hubs that is part of the, you know, it's the product initiative. That is already there as an idea. You know, we have a structure with different uh, existing networks, but it's not, they don't work uh, exactly like we have experienced with, with uh, that they should work, you know, to be very efficient. So we have to basically create a program, maybe uh, a pilot or a trainer trainer or some kind of um, mini hub, you know, uh, where we make this, this positive experience. So, our recommendation, of course, we have policy recommendations and we are implementing recommendations. The latter I just explained. So, uh, building on the idea of the European Circular Business Funds. Um, but the policy recommendations, that are not new, everybody knows them. So, it's basically level playing field. It's what does it mean? It means fair conditions, frameworks, policy uh, frameworks that would enable. Um, Computer, the young startups, the scale ups, but also SMEs to not only be in this other level because they invest in more, more resources, more time. Uh, they're struggling a lot with um, new business models, so nobody understands them. So, this is something that really is, um, provides them at least um, a level of playing field in, in, in the level of, of, of cost pricing. So, maybe uh, initiatives like um, eco mobilization for the end of life. Maybe green public procurement, so they get a give, they get a break in selling their products, maybe to uh, schools, to hospitals, you know, and other public administrations. And maybe tax breaks at national level. Why not tax them a, a mandated company or somebody who's preparing uh, a little bit less than for VAT? Why would they not? Do? All these financial initiatives might be hitting them at the bottom line, so they are lower. Ratio of cost. So they are competitive with the more conventional ones. And over time, of course, the market will recognize it. So it's policy recommendations, which go from the public, of course, but certainly implementing implementation of these uh, certain businesses. Yeah, or... What would you recommend? Well, first of all, I think that the needs to be like a policy in the past. And I think that's a uh, very important. Um, from outside, uh, and also uh, since we are talking about people, um, the facilitating the communication between uh, stakeholders and uh, startups or SMEs that are um, like starting up, uh, I think it's uh, very important because uh, most of the time they don't how to, uh, just to to get to a point or to get something. So uh, I think that one of the most uh, important things that uh, needs to be done. Uh, and also, uh, I think it's very really important to uh, facilitate uh, education uh, programs and uh, uh, yeah, specifically uh, education because. Uh, like we should put um, some uh, accessible uh, reports or um, yeah, tools that uh, let us know how a textile sector um, works, uh, how to implement sustainability in our daily life as well. And uh, well, yeah, it's mostly that works. But I would like to add uh, to those mm -hmm. things. Well, obviously, I think as uh, I mentioned before, um, we would also like to see if we some more exploration programs, always with the financial support of the parts tools, which is very important. Um, for the creation of the development of sustainable house, which we can 
it's very important. Uh, we would like to see more circular micro factories in European cities. Mm -hmm. uh, we also think that it's very important to focus on the ethical supply chain management uh, for traceability and transparency. Uh, and of course, uh, what we see now also in the World of EU project, uh, mentioned by Laura, um, the uh, technologies, uh, so the use of digital technologies and AI for some of the entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, so we're very excited to see all this and also for sustainable um, development, the development of sustainable fashion hubs. Uh, we're glad to see that the new calls are focusing more on the social and human approach of these uh, micro factories and how mm -hmm. they can be incorporated in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this is a very important aspect to focus on. And maybe in addition to this, for another episode that is taking funding, uh, what we experienced, of course, was a cascade funding for them, which means we had this lump sum of money that we could equally distribute to the different companies for their expenses to get to the event or to make them a last second assessment or something like this. But it was really, really useful, but of course, it was only provided to those few companies that actually made it to the 35. Um, so I could imagine that this, this kind of European and circular you know, hubs, they would also have this. You know, they could basically provide like a, a free voucher or something like, like a, a check, you know, with uh, 5,000 euros or more, that those companies then would spend on local uh, experts or, 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 you know, either to just the management class or uh, how to certify it. Or to uh, access a database with potential suppliers and I'll name it. You know, because sometimes even they're struggling for well, 5,000 euros, which for a big business is nothing, uh, on having exactly, exactly the support that you need at that moment. But they, they don't have the time to apply for some accelerator. It's great to have accelerator programs, but they can go out and find them, apply, finally get them this uh, development group and then get some money. It's way too forgiving. So we found these, well, I call it vouchers, but these kind of mini budgets that they really used on exactly what they needed at that moment. We found that it's super, super important. But of course, uh, the funds are limited, we know, but they were the most effective to do. So, Alex, um, what can we do to generate all of this knowledge? Um, we have methodologies, we have community. Um, what can we do with all of this? <coughs> well, we can do many, many things. Um, and I don't have the answer. And I, I hope that out of it, we can conclude to an answer. Um, the thing is that we have generated all the knowledge, methodologies, uh, uh, tools. And now that the projects are ending or have ended already, um, they're going to get lost, actually. They're going to get lost. So um, instead of always doing new things, creating new spaces, uh, calling for more projects, I think we should use what we have already. And maybe have an expert fashion initiative, I don't know. But also, I don't know if the solution is to create a new hub, a new space. We have enough. We need to get well connected under one umbrella. And also, it's not only about having a pool of experts, which is very useful because we have observed a lack of uh, business skills, etc., which is true. But we could also see it um, um, uh, not only for the services, but also as possibilities for, uh, for people to, to have mobility programs, to, to go to different countries and work in other factories and see how they do it and come back. And so to have mobility. Which is not a service exactly, it's something service facilitated by the network uh, consistent of these hubs. So, I do you know that this is my dream. So, yeah. Thank you, Anais. Um, so, we have a tight schedule, we're running on a tight schedule, so um, we're going to thank you all um, and let's uh, round applause for our final project.